Hello my friend, how's your day going? I hope you're having a nice one so far. I'm happy you're here because today I want to talk about forgotten home decor trends that I think need to make a comeback. These have been put away in the shadows, they're not mainstream right now, but I think we should reconsider them and bring them back. So let's get into it. Hello, my name is Jorge if you're new here and I love all things home decor, DIYs, thrifting, all that great stuff. And one thing that I like about interior design is the fact that it is subjective. There is no right or wrong um, answer. Yes, there are some principles, but overall it's all about personal preference. What do you like? What do you want to bring into your house? What tells your story? And of course, one of the things that I like about it is the fact that you can mix styles and in particular, I like mixing sort of more vintage pieces, things that are from the past with things that are newer, trending per se, and kind of doing it in a harmonious way, which can be a little tricky. But today I want to talk about, of course, home decor trends. I have my list here, always growing list. We'll see how much I can get through, but let's just keep this fun. Let's keep this casual. Um, let's get into it. Hutches. Do you have a hutch at home? Or sometimes they're known as china cabinets. Basically these cabinets used to store or display really nice um, dinnerware traditionally in the dining room. Well, I'm a little concerned because I'm seeing them in thrift stores and Facebook marketplace. People don't want them, I guess. They're getting rid of them. I'm a little concerned because I see the potential with these and I follow a lot of like high-end antique retailers or resellers. I think the one I can think of right now is Gallery North over in Los Angeles. I've been following them for quite some time and what I like about their spaces or their um, antiques that they sell is they curate them in a beautiful way, very minimal, but I see a lot of hutches that have so much potential and they are not just limited to the dining room. You can put them in the living room, family room, hallway, whatever your space allows for and kind of make a statement. Now, of course, there's so many different styles out there. There are some that are more modern leaning and there are some that are more traditional or something in between. And so I think you should save yours or go and find one and put it in a space that you know, allows for. And if you don't like the color of it, you don't like maybe the style of it, maybe you can tweak it up a little bit. Maybe you can sand it down and kind of just strip it down to the raw wood. Let it just sit and let it age with time gracefully. I think that's a nice look. Or maybe you can paint it black. One thing that I did with the cabinet, and I actually have a video with, I think it was a gun cabinet, but I transformed it into a display cabinet. I left the interior as is with the wood and then I painted the exterior black and with some nice sort of brass hardware, I think, the vintage hardware. It looks really nice, so maybe you can do something like that. But a piece like this can really make a statement, give you some extra story. Now tell me, is that something you're on board with or is that something you're gonna pass? I really want one. I don't have that much space here, but if I did, I would definitely put a statement hutch. I would sand it down and just leave the natural wood, let it get stained, let it get dirty, but let me know, is that something you're into or not? We have bronze, yes, the metal bronze. And although I feel like metals do not go out of style, they come and go with the trends. And right now I feel like bronze has been sort of in the shadows. Right now, brass and black metals in general have just kind of been everywhere and they look nice but let's not forget about bronze the last time we saw bronze was probably in the early 2000s into the 2010s and i'm talking about sort of mainstream design um, because of course it's still around but i think bronze has this sort of old world look to it it has this warmth to it and like i said we saw in the early 2000s into the 2010s in the oiled rub bronze finish which it's kind of this is like darker brown and you know it was everywhere we saw in the lighting hardware doorknobs everything everything and when i think of old rub bronze i kind of think of like more traditional styles i think of tuscan kitchens which there was a lot of like a lot of tuscan kitchens not my cup of tea but i feel like we can bring back bronze and reimagine it the way that we see brass now because brass has taken on modern forms when, and especially things like door pulls and home decor just in general the same thing can be applied to bronze let's bring it back and let's bring it back sort of in the pure form and allowing it to 
patina over time the way that brass does too. And the way that bronze patinas, patinas over time, it kind of turns dark brown, maybe it has a little bit of green uh, color to it, or maybe a little bit of orange. Either way, I think it's a nice metal. So the way that we can start incorporating it is through home decor. So, you know, statues, um, lighting, furniture. I've seen some uh, credences out there that have this nice um, sort of bronze color to it and all of those things i think let's bring it back and just have fun with it there's so much possibilities so i'm predicting it i think it's going to come back soon next up let's bring back bauhaus design and maybe you're familiar with it and to be honest with you i don't think it has ever gone out of style but it comes and goes with the trends and it really has influenced a lot of more modern styles including mid-century modern i believe but if you're not familiar with bauhaus design this sort of movement goes back to the early 20th century in Germany, most famously credited to this architect named Walter Gropius. Gropius. Um, and there's this like famous design school. Here's a photo of it. But essentially this dude, or I guess the philosophy with this movement was to unify the principles of mass production with individual artistic vision. So essentially it's taking those everyday mass produced items because there was a lot of mass production during this time, there still is, but taking those items and making them not boring and putting in the artistic value into them through of course modern ways, not necessarily ornamental. So properties of this design style, the geometry is very simple, not just in the architecture, but also in the everyday things like furniture. And I think there was lighting, cookware, you know, all home things. But the geometry was all about sort of simple squares, rectangles, ovals, circles. I don't know about triangles, but just keeping it very simple. Now in terms of color, there was some use of color, but it would be primary colors. So red, yellow, blue. Now, does this mean you need to go out and paint your walls red, blue, or yellow? Not necessarily. We'll talk about the application here in a minute, but essentially, with this design style, it's all about bringing in the beauty into modern modern styles. With this movement came about a lot of beautiful home decor things, um, furniture, most famously um, the Wassily chair or the Barcelona chair, which you might have seen, and the MT8 table lamp. Lots of beautiful things. Now, if we're being real here, for my architecture background, I feel like this is one of those design styles, and it's still used today, but I feel like it's one of those design styles that people who are really into interior design or know what they're doing use. So you're not gonna see this in Target or any of that kind of stuff, but maybe you might see hints of it um, or inspiration of it in Ikea, CB2, I um, can't think of others, but essentially, if you want to incorporate this stuff and you can go out and buy vintage Bauhaus inspired things, which is going to cost you a pretty penny, but there's a lot of reproductions out there that are kind of affordable. Of course, Barcelona chair, there's lots of reproductions. You could get an affordable one out there, the sling chair and all that stuff. Maybe I'll do a blog post where I share a roundup of things over on casarefine.com. If you haven't checked out my website, go see it over there. Sign up for my newsletter. Don't worry, I want to annoy you with it. This is a design style that I think is worth looking into. Do some research, get some books, um, and just have fun with it. I think it could be a nice way to bring in a little bit of modern into your space if it allows. All right, let's move on to the next one because I feel like I can talk about this one forever. And to be honest with you, I kind of miss architecture school now. And I might do some DIYs inspired by Bauhaus movement, but let me know if that's something you're interested in. All right, moving on. Next up, let's bring back some word art. Yes, let's put some words on our art and make a statement. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no, let's not do that. I'm kidding, do not do that. Although I'm a little concerned because I still see a lot of word out, out there. And to be honest with you, I do see it being successful in certain applications, especially like in mid-century styles. But for the most part, let's stay away from it. We do not need words on our walls or on our canister or bins or whatever have you. Let's just keep it inside the books, okay? But if you really want to, go for it to each their own. Next on the list, let's bring back Tiffany lamps. Now here's some photos of some Tiffany lamps. Basically these table lamps made up of um, different stained glass for the lampshade. Now, 
These go back to the late 19th slash early 20th century. I think they were made by Tiffany Studios. Um, and essentially with these lamps, they kind of have different iterations of them. Some of them are irregular and they kind of simulate natural elements, kind of like a branch or a tree or just shrubs. And then there are some that are more geometric, a little more modern. And so they have simple shapes like, you know, rectangles, squares, um, maybe some ovals, triangles, another popular one. And then there are the flowered ones and those kind of have motifs of nature. So you might see things like flowers, bugs, maybe even feathers. Now, when I think of these lamps and the original ones were made up of um, stained glass that had lead in it, I believe. The ones that are made today don't have lead in it. I hope they don't. Now, when I think of this lamp, I kind of see it as a more traditional style lamp. And it doesn't necessarily belong to one design style, but it was pretty big in the Art Nouveau era. We won't get into that right now, but essentially, if you have a more traditional home, this lamp can really work well in that space. Now, is it limited to just traditional spaces? Not necessarily, I beg to defer because I feel like in today's age, especially right now where we're seeing a lot of this um, movement of using a lot of vintage antique pieces and mixing it with modern styles like I like to do here, I think it could benefit um, in today's day and age where we're doing that. And so is it one a lamp that I'm gonna go out and buy right now? I don't think so, but I think it's worth mentioning, especially if you wanna bring in a little bit of color into your space. I keep my space pretty neutral, but the great thing about that is that you can introduce color as needed and just switch it out. And a lamp like this with the stained glass that has some color, I think it feels more like a designer statement. So maybe it's something that you should look into if you're looking to bring in a little bit of color. Hello, Granite, how are you? I've missed you, it's been a few years. Yes, Granite, let's talk about Granite for a moment. Now, again, stone is one of those things, it's timeless, it's from the earth, it doesn't go out of style, we go out of style, but, you know, it's not really trending right now. Right now, it's all about marbles, marbles, marble. Um, and let me tell you, there is more out there than just marble. Granite, I think, could be a nice sort of stone, and yes, it's a little bit more busy than marble, not as, elegant per se, but I think there's beauty in it. Now, the last time we saw mainstream granite was in the like 90s into the 2000s. Maybe you still have granite at home. I have granite actually in the kitchen floor, but if we're gonna bring back granite, let's do it right. So let's actually make sure that it is cut in modern ways. We don't need the beveled edges for the countertops let's keep it nice and square and clean also the finish let's actually hone the granite just like we hone marble um, and if you're not familiar honing is kind of this um, finish um, this technique that you would do to stone where you kind of make it look like it's matte like it's that you basically are removing the shine from the stone and it looks really kind of elegant to be honest with you it looks like you really want to touch it with your hands it just makes it feel visually feel more soft or look more soft. Anyways, I think we can bring it back and yeah, we can bring it back, of course, into our furniture and all that. And there's so many options with granite. Of course, there's the gray, but there's also, I think, white. There is, I think, green, black, if you like the darker colors, but let's not forget about granite. Granite also has some potential. All right, I don't want this video to get long. I definitely have more, but maybe we'll make a part two if you're interested, but Let's just cut it here. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really like talking about this stuff. It's really cool looking back at other design trends that were really popular at some point, but are now kind of in the shadows. And it's really great because design's always changing, but the beauty of it is we can bring things back and we can mix things and all of that. So let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if one of those things interested you, if you have some of the stuff that I talked about. but. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you for taking your time, spending it with me. Um, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff that helps out the channel. Be sure to go check out my website, casarefine.com. Sign up for my newsletter. I'm excited to start getting more active on there, but I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.